To be honest, in the past, when I would hear about people giving up sugar, I would just think, why? Why would you wanna do that? Sugar is so good, it's in so many delicious things. I don't really have a sugar problem. This is what people are always talking about. This is why it's sustainable. I want them to be a choice and not a craving. The key to success with eating no sugar is Welcome back to Old World Home. My name is Hillary. So there were a few reasons why I even wanted to try this no sugar thing. Number one, it was the dead of winter and honestly it was just something that I had been thinking about for a long time. It was something I could, you know, a small goal that I could work towards. I'd always heard that it's just good for you. It's good for your overall health when there is less sugar in your diet. I wanted to have increased energy that was sustained throughout the whole day. I'm a mom of four. I don't get a ton of good quality sleep. I still have a baby that wakes me up in the middle of the night. I do also suffer from occasional migraines, which at this point I think I've pretty much linked to the lack of sleep. That seems to be the main trigger for me, that and dehydration. But that was another goal of mine to see if the no sugar would help. I wanted to just break the habit. I didn't want to be controlled by sugar cravings. I wanted to choose to have sugar rather than feel the crave and the need to have it. I also just wanted to see if this is something that I could sustain long term. Is this something that I could actually implement in my life day to day for the foreseeable future? Is it even practical when you are just surrounded by sweets all the time? So for all those reasons and more, I decided to embark on this 30 day trial. Again, it was just 30 days. If I could commit to doing it for that short time and see how it went, I could always introduce sugar back in later after that. 30 days really go pretty quick. All right, so first of all, what was I considering a refined sugar? Basically anything with a refined white sugar, brown sugar, something that is farther derived from its original source. So I gave up sweet breakfast like waffles and pancakes and pastries. Honestly, sweetener is in so many things like ketchup and mayonnaise and barbecue sauce and dried fruits and things that you would think don't necessarily even need sugar. Manufacturers just put it in everything, pretty much anything that is prepackaged for the most part has sugar in it because it is an easy filler, it's cheap, it makes things taste good, and it makes us crave it. So I started these 30 days on January 18th, and in that those 30 days, in that time frame, we had birthdays, we had the Super Bowl, we had Valentine's Day, we had various other get-togethers, and while that is not an ideal time to give up sugar, honestly, when I look at my calendar, there is no ideal time. There's always birthdays, there's always get-togethers. So right away, on day two of this no sugar, we went to a birthday party, and there was three different kinds of cake, and chocolate cake, which is like my absolute favorite, but I just stuck with some fresh pineapple and just let the other desserts pass by. So it has been eight days since I have done no refined sugar. Yesterday was day seven and I had a migraine. So I think there's a few different things that go into why I get migraines. So, so far the no sugar hasn't really helped but things like my sugar and my coffee the very first thing i had to you know swap out on the first day was the sugar that i put in my coffee i usually make my own homemade like vanilla syrup but it has refined sugar in it just like white sugar so i swapped it out for date syrup which is just dates it's that's the only ingredient i'm still like on the fence about if that's even considered refined it was like a mix between like molasses and um like maple syrup like kind of a richer flavor and that worked fine for like the first five days six days and then yesterday and today i actually switched it to maple syrup just a tablespoon of maple syrup honey and maple syrup and date syrup like are these still considered sugar because i have been using them sparingly i don't think i'm ready to have no sweetener at all in my coffee so i don't know if i'm breaking the rules here but Switching over to a more natural source has been kind of an easy swap. So after trying the date syrup and then the maple syrup, I finally landed on something that is completely sugar-free that I truly feel like is going to be a life change, which is just so crazy for me to even say that. I was so 
dead set on I'm not giving up my vanilla syrup in my coffee it's too good it's my little treat in the day what's a tablespoon of sugar but honestly it adds up and as I was going about this month one of my new goals that kind of developed was to I mean I was having no sugar so I really learned the importance of not starting my day with sugar because now jump ahead 30 days later I have just found that I am so much more stabilized when it comes to hunger and that craving for sugar if I don't have it in the morning. Surprise, surprise. So what I do now in my coffee is it's actually so much faster, which is actually nice as well. I used to froth my milk, which is delicious, and I can do it if I want to. But now I just put a little bit of vanilla extract into my coffee, a little bit of cinnamon, and then I pour in about a tablespoon-ish of heavy cream into my coffee. So vanilla, cinnamon, and heavy cream, and it is so good, it's so flavorful. I really don't miss the sugar at all, and I am just really happy about that. It's, again, something that I didn't think I could ever give up. It's so creamy and delicious with no added sugar. And then tonight, I'm actually going out to a girl's night, and we're gonna go to a Thai restaurant. And I tried contacting the restaurant to get an ingredient list for some of their dishes, or even just to ask if they had any dishes that were sugar-free. I didn't hear back at all. I'm gonna just try to do my best, use my best judgment, and pick something that seems like it won't be a sugary option. Just left the restaurant and I got the basil fried rice and I only ate half of it. It is nap time. The baby has already woken up twice and I'm trying to get some things done and he's kind of stressing me out and I really want to like eat some sugar right now to make me feel better. But I know it's not because I'm hungry, it's because I'm a little stressed out. So I have like an hour until I usually have like my afternoon coffee. So just try to work on something else and not have any sugar. I definitely learned throughout this month that the key to success with eating no sugar is to keep fresh whole foods on hand in your home. When I am full and satisfied with a meal, I truly don't crave the sugar as much. Like I mentioned, I am definitely way more triggered by my emotions and frustration and if it's been a long day and the kids are finally in bed, I just want you know, a bowl of sugary cereal or I just want some ice cream. I want something to make me feel better because my feelings are a little raw from, from the day. I have a lot of emotions to feel throughout the day from my children and myself and then of course I have my spouse and if there's just... A lot of feelings so I definitely learned that that is what I was drawn to most was to have some chocolate have something that's gonna make me feel better and you know give me that jolt of endorphins or whatever because I've had a bad day so by having fresh things first of all filling up on a, a real meal with good healthy fats really satisfies my hunger. So to fill up on protein, fat, and fiber has really been the key for me. And I feel like that's a whole nother discussion of like, you know, uh, it, is it keto? Is it just a high protein, low carb lifestyle? When I'm full and satisfied with the food that I'm eating, I really don't have those cravings for the sugar anymore, which is like, this is what people are always talking about. This is, why it's sustainable. This is why people are able to stick with it long term because when you're eating real whole foods, having less or no refined sugar and also fewer refined carbs, that was something I also kind of peppered in as well because refined white carbs basically turn into sugar in your body as well. So it's Friday night in our house, that means movie night and it's just been a long week and I really wanna have some kind of junk food tonight. Some sort of sugary thing. I will probably just sit on the couch with some kind of fruit. My daughter made chocolate pudding and it smells so good. I will say even just this short time into it, fruits do taste sweeter to me. So it does kinda hit that, you know, sweet tooth feeling that I'm wanting to have. It is day 18 of no refined sugar and while it definitely has gotten easier and more like routine to fall into 
my rhythm of what I'm eating, the times that I'm really tempted to eat something with sugar or just like junk food in general is when I'm stressed out. Like I definitely am learning that I'm an emotional eater and when I feel, you know, like things are going well and I have, you know, good rhythm going in our day, it's so much easier. But when, you know, I'm either frustrated about something or tired, definitely noticing when I'm tired. So because sometimes in the afternoon, during quiet time with my little guys or in the evening, that's when I kind of feel like I want something carby and sweet or just sweet. And I realize I'm probably just tired. I probably need to either need to just go to bed or take a nap or lay down or something. And really that, that seems to help a ton. And again, just knowing that I have a real good whole meal coming my way in just, you know, a few hours or, you know, overnight in the morning, I know I'm gonna have a good breakfast. It kind of helps to squash those cravings. But right now we are heading out to do something fun with the kids, go to a little aquarium. And I don't know what I'm gonna eat for lunch. We, we aren't packing food to bring with us. So we're just gonna be at the mercy of whatever food is available to us, you know, out and about. So we'll see, I don't know what I'm gonna get. So what do I eat? What am I having for breakfast instead of sweet, starchy carbs? So one of my favorites is a note meal that I make, which I have mentioned in a previous video. It's like a chia flax hemp seed mix with some almond flour and some full fat Greek yogurt, a little bit of milk, vanilla berries. It is so satisfying. It's a nice warm breakfast that was perfect to give me that full satisfied feeling in the morning, especially during the winter. And I also love eggs, all different kinds of eggs, eggs and avocado, eggs and potatoes, eggs and fruit. And, and I know potato is like, is that a starchy carb? I wasn't 100% strict with it. I was more so focused on the white refined sugars during this month, so I still eat potatoes. Or I would have oatmeal sometimes, and then instead of putting maple syrup on it, which like I mentioned, I don't consider that to be a refined sugar, but I really was trying to be, you know, as close to the no sugar as I could. So I really kind of gave up on the maple syrup and I would just put warm berries and a little cinnamon on my oatmeal. And then for lunch, if I didn't have eggs for breakfast, I would almost always have them for lunch or I would have leftovers from the dinner before. And then dinner was some kind of, again, that protein, fat and fiber some kind of protein and some veggies and i would try to skip out on putting you know like sugar in you know sometimes i make homemade chinese food i would put brown sugar in it so i tried to swap that out for honey some all natural raw honey which again i mean is still sugar in your body so i was trying to do that very sparingly so like i went to pasta really for dinner and sometimes i would have rice or i would just have um, riced cauliflower instead. So again, that's not sugar related, but kind of goes along with those starchy white carbs. So after the 30 days were up, I decided to celebrate by having some delicious chocolate cake, which is my absolute favorite dessert. And I just, again, learned through this process that sugar and desserts and treats, I want them to be a choice and not a craving. I want to choose to have it and enjoy it and not feel like it's something that I need to have to appease some emotional response or something like that. And what I actually prefer to do is have, if I'm gonna have a treat, a chocolate cake or something like that, if I have it in the house, I'll have it in the afternoon with my afternoon coffee versus having it at night when I don't really have a ton of time to be you know, working it off and, you know, moving around, moving my body. If we go out on the weekends and again, if there's birthday parties or, you know, any other kind of get together and there's dessert, I will have it then and enjoy it. I will say that I wasn't, I don't know. I don't think I was a huge sugar um, eater. Like I, I hardly ever go and get fast food, which I know there's just so much sugar, you know, hidden into it, you know, sweet things and savory things. They just put sugar in everything. Um, I don't really buy food out. I feel like that is kind of where people can get into trouble. If you're eating a lot of food out at a restaurant or just prepackaged things, they are just so full of sugar. So we do primarily eat at home, so I'm able to control the amount of sugar 
that I put into the food that I'm making. But even in prepackaged things, like I said, they do sneak the sugar in. So while I didn't think that I was having it all that much, there were so many times that I had to check labels and pass on something or my kids bring candy home from school or from a friend's house and they would offer it to me and I have to say no. And I just realized how many times throughout my day and throughout my week, I'm having to say no to sugar. So it really was all around me, even if I wasn't that aware of it. Another thing I'll mention is that I'm not big on sugar substitutes, so I have tried many of them throughout the past, you know, couple decades of my life, and they just, I can't get over the fake taste of it, so I know that that's some ways that people get around having no sugar is they'll use, a, you know, like a chemical substitute or a even a natural one I just I kind of avoid those altogether and if I want to have something sweet I'll just use either raw honey or maple syrup or dates um, I feel like that is a more natural source yes it is still sugar but my body just reacts better because it knows what it is and it's not chemicals so I don't really do any sugar substitutes now I did take a little bit of footage of just my overall body <laughs> to see if there were any visible changes from doing a month of no sugar and I haven't actually filmed the after yet at the time that I'm filming this but I just I want to say that I wasn't so focused on the appearance of it. I wanted to focus more on how I felt and my energy. I definitely had more energy and I didn't have that afternoon slump. I just, I felt so much better despite the lack of sleep that I have. It overall health wise, I just feel fantastic. So in conclusion, highly recommend, give it a try. If this is something you've ever considered doing or you wonder what it could do for you, just try it, just jump in. There's no good time to do it. It's always gonna be a challenge when you have get togethers and things like that. And if you can't commit to a month, try just a week and see if you can do it for a week and see how you feel. Maybe you go again another week and then just see how long you can do it or set a goal like I did, 30 days. And now going forward, I do think that I will continue many of the things that I've been doing. Again, the coffee, huge, huge for me, and no sweet breakfast. I will have them occasionally. I'm not like swearing off sugar for the rest of my life. I will enjoy them from time to time, but I just feel so much better when I don't start my day with sugar. And if I'm gonna have it, just enjoy it in the afternoon or again, in the evening on the weekends or something like that. So definitely let me know in the comments if this is something you've ever done, if you, you know, have done it in the past or if it's something you would like to do. I would just love to chat about it. It has been kind of life-changing, I'll say. That Maybe that sounds dramatic, but now I understand why people have given it up and choose to live that way. I just, I do think that the balanced approach is much more reasonable because we will have parties, we will have get-togethers, and sugar and things that are in those treats being enjoyed in the presence of loved ones. I don't know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. So just to have that balance, that maybe like 90-10 balance of enjoying those sugary sweet treats, I think that uh, that's gonna be my approach. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, be sure to stick around and subscribe and I'll be talking to you soon. Take care guys. Bye.